We're playing some of the most broken cards in the history of Magic the Gathering today. Black Lotus, Ancestral Recall, Tolarian Academy, and we're doing it in Vintage Besiege the Mirror Storm. Let's go check it out. Here it is. This is the decklist that we'll be playing today. So what is Vintage Beseech the Mirror Storm? Well, it's obviously a storm combo deck with Beseech the Mirror in it, but it plays a bunch of powerful cards like Necropotence and my favorite vintage card altogether, Tinker. I love casting Tinker and getting Bolasa Citadel. It's just the best thing about Vintage in my opinion. But it's also a deck that wins using Urza Saga, which finds Manifold Key that you pair with Time Vault to take infinite turns. That is one way of winning the game, and eventually you kill them with Construct Tokens off of the Urza Saga. Additionally, you do have Tundras of Agony, and you can create Storm using Yogmoth's Will, another insanely broken card. So this deck is really high power level. And recently in Vintage, Ponder was unrestricted, and this was the deck that I thought would really take advantage of that. It turns out it was, in fact, Doomsday and not Beseech the Mirror Storm, but... I wanted to play Ponder in here, and I think one thing that I realized was that structurally it doesn't make sense. In order to support Beseech the Mirror, you need a certain density of artifacts and enchantments to sacrifice. So you're playing obviously all the broken artifact mana, the Moxin, Mana Crypt, Black Lotus, Hio, but Dress Down actually ends up taking the spot that Ponder would be in. And Dress Down's really important because in Vintage, the Mono White Initiative deck with things like Main Deck Archon of Amiria is in it. And then there's the Luris decks of the format that have things like Lavinia that you just have to answer. So instead of playing Ponder, we're playing three copies of Dress Down. This does seem like a natural fit for Ponder, but you do have to engage with the format. And I think Dress Down is perfect because it's another permanent we could sacrifice to the bargain cost on Beseech the Mirror. So that is a slight change today. We're playing three copies of Dress Down. I actually recorded this video about six months ago. You can find that in the card above. And in that video, we were on two Dress Downs. And one of my bits of feedback at the end was like, I was, I'm not sure if we actually want to play Dress Down. I was wrong. You actually want to go up on Dress Down. We're also playing a 13th land today, a main deck island. I just want to reduce the mulligans that we took in that video. So that is why I'm playing the island. Some people play like a main deck one ring or even a main deck copy of Shieldra, the Apocalypse. I'm not doing that. I just want consistency. And speaking of consistency, one of the biggest problems I had in that video was that we struggled to find our action spells. Like I just sat with hands full of counter magic and mana, didn't find payoffs. And this is going to upset some vintage people, some vintage stalwarts that play this deck. I looked at a bunch of deck lists and I studied and almost everyone plays three copies of Beseech the Mirror because you never really want to draw two. I understand that, but you do need to draw the first one. And that was one of the biggest problems I had playing this deck. And I've played it a bunch, not just in that one video, but I've played it off screen. And I think that the deck, when you don't find exactly one Beseech the Mirror, just doesn't function. And people play like a one of Factor Fiction instead. I think it's terrible. Uh, that's just my honest opinion. I'm not trying to slander anyone here, but it doesn't like me getting two or three random cards isn't really what the deck wants. Like you just need to find Yogmoth's Will or Necropotence or Tinker or whatever. And that's what Beseech the Mirror does. So I'm playing the full four copies. Sorry to you factor fiction lovers out there. I just don't agree with you, but that's one of the beautiful things about magic. We all don't need to agree. We can just try different things and see how it goes. So by the end of this video, I could be like, well, maybe they were right, but chances are I'm not going to say that, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, without any further ado, I will see you in the first round. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsworm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first match. Our opponent has revealed the Lures of the Dream Den. So they're likely playing the most popular deck in the format. Here we've opened up a hand that doesn't do a whole lot, if I'm being honest. So I believe we're supposed to mulligan this. All right, so this hand seems reasonable to me. I will keep and we'll put Necropotence on the bottom. We have Lorien revealed to search out our black mana source. 
And from there, we just need to find Dark Ritual. We already have a Fluster Storm to protect ourselves. Lotus Petal, not the worst draw. We'll play out Mox Ruby, play out that Lotus Petal, and since he's Divining Top. They're going to Force of Will the top. Wow. I'm okay with that. They've already paid the life, and they Exile Repeal. Good deal. I am fine with that. So now, if we can draw a Dark Ritual on our turn, that should be the game, because we could play Beseech the Mirror with Flusterstorm back up, and they're on four cards. Like, sure, they could have double interaction, but... We're in a good spot as long as we find Dark Ritual or Black Lotus. They play Urza's Saga. Okay, still four cards in hand. On the end step, we'll cycle Lorien Revealed. They're going to fetch with Misty Rainforest in response for a Tundra. We'll grab that Underground Sea. So they're playing the White List, so this does have Lavinia in it. We'll take a draw step here. You know, I wanted Dark Ritual. I'll take the other one mana card from Alpha Beta that also says three in it. You know, not Healing Salve, not Giant Growth, Ancestral Recall. Terrific draw here. They brainstorm in response. And you might be thinking, why play your land before Ancestral Recall? I don't want to have to sacrifice Lotus Petal. Tinker. Okay, so we're in a very good spot here. We could make the assumption that they don't have anything if Ancestral resolved. So I could tinker in a Citadel here. Or I could wait for Flusterstorm backup. The problem is if they found a Lavinia. I'm going to disrespect here. We'll play the Tinker, sacrifice Mox Ruby. I don't think that they would have allowed Ancestral Recall to just resolve. We'll grab the Blossom Citadel. Unfortunately, we do reveal another Flusterstorm. But we do have Vampiric Tutor. So I could, in my upkeep, go get Dressed Down. That is a choice. Wasteland. They'll destroy our Underground Sea. They have three cards in hand. Looks like no Lavinia. We'll draw the Fluster. Besiege the Mirror. I will cast this without Bargain. So it's just going to be four life Demonic Tutor. And our opponent concedes. Nice. Okay. Easy game one. And there's so many cards in Vintage where I'm going to switch this to Pile View. I usually do Card View because it's better for the viewer for most formats. For Vintage, there's just too many singletons. It's not an option for us. So we are facing the white uh, Lurus Control deck. I'd like to try Long Goodbye. This is a card that I'm testing today. A lot of lists play one mana removal spells. There's a bunch of them. Cut down, Fatal Push. I even tested Snuff Out in the past. I think Snuff Out's really good against the Mono White Initiative deck. But the nice thing about Long Goodbye is that it can't be countered, which means no matter what, it's going to remove that Lavinia from the battlefield. And I think that's actually just like what this deck kind of wants. In this matchup, I feel like Mystical Tutor being card advantage probably isn't what we want. And then here's an unpopular opinion. I don't think Time Walk is amazing in this matchup, so I'm going to board that out. I want to keep all of my dress downs. I think that those are key cards in the matchup. You could board out like an off-color Mox, so probably this Mox Pearl. Uh, it is the new Mox Pearl because my rental account doesn't... I don't have 1,500 tickets to rent all the versions I want. So we are playing the ugly Black Lotus and Mox Pearl today. But... I think that this is the list I would like to resubmit here. We're keeping our good card density high. And, you know, like, I get it. Time Walk is a good card. But this is not a deck that abuses it that well. Uh, we have Urza Saga Constructs and Belasa Citadel. And that's pretty much it. So a lot of the time, Time Walk feels like Blue Explorer. And I think that we just want better cards than that. So I will submit here. Once again, they reveal Lurus of the Dream Den. We've opened up a hand where if we find a Beseech the Mirror, this hand is going bananas. I'm going to keep. Also, once again, I'd rather draw Beseech the Mirror than Factor Fiction, right? Like, I want all four copies of Beseech the Mirror. Our opponent has taken a mulligan. Let's go. They're on the play with six cards. Tundra, Mock Sapphire, and Lavinia. I am going to Force of Will this, exiling... <sighs> Part of me thinks it's supposed to be the Brainstorm. I know that Brainstorm's my only action spell, but I'm going to need to protect. And it looks like they had Force of Will backup. So they opened up on turn one Lavinia with Force of Will backup. They're down to one card. We have five answers in our deck to this Lavinia, so it's not the end of the world. I can't play the Black Lotus now. It will be countered by the Lavinia. 
We draw Mox Pearl. Not a good draw step for us. We'll play Soul Ring. That was the risk with pitching the Brainstorm, was that I'm going to get stuck with cards I don't want in my hand. But if it resolved, my counterspell that is, it was much better to have Mental Misstep plus Flusterstorm. Three mana, they're going to put Lurus to their hand and then attack for two. I will fall to 17. Force of Will, ugh. All right, Strip Mine, that was a good draw. I'm actually good to just pick it up from here. I think we're so far behind and they're about to have a Lurus and a Giant Construct on the table. We can just go to the next game. Being on the play versus being on the draw was the difference there. One thing you could do is bring in Needles, the name Wasteland. I've seen that out of other pilots. I just don't know how much I love that. Like, I feel like you're sort of attacking the matchup in the wrong spot. I'm going to just resubmit. Okay, we're on the play this time. Okay, so having double Beseech the Mirror, not great. But I don't know if this hand would have been keepable if one of these Beseech the Mirrors was a factor of fiction regardless. So we will go to six cards. Okay, so do we want to try this or do we want to mulligan? I think I'm going to keep this, but I don't love it. We'll put the second copy of Beseech the Mirror on the bottom of the deck. And I believe the plan is to play Scalding Turn, Lotus Petal, Pass. On the end step, we'll cycle Lorien Revealed. And then in our upkeep, we'll Vampiric Tutor for Ancestral Recall, Player, Land, and then decide if we want to cast the Ancestral or not. All right, Scalding Tarn, Lotus Petal, pass the turn. Wasteland, Black Lotus, okay. Well, I don't need to play into the Wasteland here. I can go grab our basic island. We grab the island and let's cycle this Lorien Revealed. We have to grab an Underground Sea. We don't have another basic island. So the question is, do we play this Underground Sea out or not? I think I'm going to. And then I'll Vampire Tutor for Ancestral Recall. I could also cycle the dress down now that we've drawn long goodbye. But I think I just want a Vampire Tutor for the Ancestral. Double Wasteland. They still have four cards. Pass the turn. In their upkeep, let's try to Ancestral Recall. They hard cast a Mindbreak Trap. You got it. Basic Island, they still have three cards now. Force of Will, so that's not terrible if we can draw Black Lotus, but right now we're still in a weird spot where even if I draw Dark Ritual, I can't play the Beseech the Mirror. One thing that I thought a lot about, and it was, I saw a couple lists with a basic Swamp in the sideboard, and I was like, is that good? I'm not sure. And after seeing how um, some of that played out, like this game, I am more interested. The problem is that Lorien Revealed doesn't find it. So it's not consistent, but with all the Wasteland decks in the format, I don't think it's necessarily the worst idea. And I think I'm going to sit on this Underground Sea, and then we can just pass the turn. They play a Mishra's Bobble. They look at our top card, and they're not going to play the Lurus in hand. So we know that they still have Lurus in their hand, and then I draw off this Bobble. Mental misstep. It's not a bad one. But I'm going to pass the turn. Land number four. They're keeping open a blue. So they might have Flusterstorm in their hand if this was their play pattern. We're going to let Lurus go. They replay Black Lotus. So the question is, do I want to burn this Lotus Petal to kill the Lurus? We don't have to make the decision right now. We can just take a draw step and then decide. All right. I'm going to long goodbye this Lurus. We'll pass the turn after that. They destroy my underground sea. Lavinia. I'm going to attempt the force of will here, realizing that it's probably going to be countered, and then we can have dress down for the Lavinia at some point. They hard cast a force of negation. They still have three cards in hand as well. It's also worth noting that if I want to beseech the mirror, I cannot sacrifice the dress down if the plan is to answer Lavinia that way. Okay, Dark Ritual is a very good draw. So... We have the resources to attempt to win next turn, but our opponent on the blue weight control deck is going to have four cards in their hand. And the odds they have something, you know, it's good for them. We'll take two, we'll go to 14. On the end step, we'll flash and dress down. It resolves, we'll draw a card, long goodbye. That was also a good draw. Colossus Citadel, not ideal. Dark Ritual. And then we'll Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing the Lotus Petal. 
Force of Will exiling Lorien revealed. Okay, so they'll have one card in hand, and we're stuck in an awkward space here where our hand doesn't really do anything anymore. They grab another land. Ah, oh, Dig Through Time. That was a very good card for them to have as their final card. Yeah. I feel like we're at the point where we're likely now buried. We're not going to be able to come back against Dig Through Time. But we'll see. Yogmoth's Will. Land number five. All right, if they have another Lavinia, they have another Lavinia, but I don't think that they would have played Dig Through Time and taken another Lavinia. So I'm going to try to save a couple points of damage here with Long Goodbye. And they pass. We have not seen a Nurza Saga yet. Those would be a very good draw if we could hit one. We'll now attempt a Yagmos Will. What are the odds our opponent has three cards in their hand that does nothing? This looks like a hard cast Force of Will here. And it is. Okay, pass. Five mana for a hard cast Lorien revealed. They're pulling ahead. I am not able to Dark Ritual into, Bis uh, into Bloss the Citadel here. I am one mana short. Wasteland. Unfortunate. Into Lavinia. No! Alright. We're probably done at this point. There's a Saga. With the Dauntless Dismantler in play, the Saga is actually not even very good. They play a Brainstorm. Yeah, I think I'm open to trying a basic Swamp list. Just with all the Wastelands in Vintage these days, it feels a lot like our opponent is essentially playing a Legacy deck in Vintage. Uh, they're on eight forces between Force of Will and Force of Negation. They have Cyborg Mindbreak Traps, four Wasteland, one Strip Mine. Like, they're playing a deck that is not really doing powerful things. It is more of a just pure control deck, and it happens to be very good against us. I'm still going to pass the turn here. I think using the Constructs is going to get us a little bit further. They did not have a Fetchable, and they're still going to combat. I'll create a Construct. Oh, it comes into play tapped. I didn't realize that. Yeah, that's the first line of the card. I just didn't think of it. And now we'll draw a card. Force will is not that good here. We'll search our library for a artifact that costs zero or one. You don't want to get one that costs zero because the Dauntless Dismantler is going to blow up the Construct token and the Mox Ruby. I think we'll grab, since he's Divining Top, and we'll play Brainstorm. They sorts to plowshares on the construct token. Okay. Brainstorm? That wasn't the worst. We'll put back Bolas's Citadel and the Force of Will. Play the Pluted Delta. I guess I with the spare mana here I can activate top to look at the top three. Just might as well see that third card. And then we'll pass the turn. They're going to destroy my Sensei's Divining Top. I'm going to fetch in response and I want to spin. We'll grab the last copy of Underground Sea and we'll activate the top. Another Urza Saga. I don't want the Mana Crypt. I do want the Fluster Storm and the Saga. Okay. Mox Pearl. They still have three cards in hand. We'll take a hit here down to six life. We'll play Urza Saga and pass the turn. Mox Jet. Still three cards. The problem with them playing out the Jet is that they're going to be able to pay for my Fluster Storm. Or as the saga goes up to the second chapter. We know that we're drawing a mana crypt that I don't really want, which is unfortunate. But I don't think I'm supposed to make a move here. We'll just pass. I need to get them in a spot where they have less mana available. And maybe Urza Saga is the thing that does that for us. Ancestral Recall. That was a very good draw step for them. They are back up to six cards now. Seal of Cleansing. Yeah, they're going to destroy the saga. We'll create a construct, and I am no longer able to play my Beseech the Mirror. I guess I wouldn't have been able to. Maybe I was supposed to Beseech in hindsight, because my construct token, or my Urza Saga was going to go away, and I wouldn't have four lands next turn. They must have another Lavinia, and they do. Yep. Most lists play three. So this is probably their last one. So they saw all three in the top half of their deck, which isn't unrealistic. And we're in a spot where we're probably dead. I was supposed to beseech the mirror last turn. That's my own fault. I don't know what I would have gotten because Yogmas Will is out of the deck. Tinker for Citadel at four life isn't very good. I also would have to pay mana because the Lavinia was in play. 
but I should have played it just because I know that the fourth land was going away. So that's my own fault. The exile the Yagmos will, it doesn't matter. I don't play the Time Twister. So the Soul Guide Lantern, not super relevant at the moment. Okay, let's see what the draw step is. Another Beseech. Okay, so that is going to be the first match. We are zero and one. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Round number two, we're on the draw, and I'm going to try this. We have turn one Urza Saga Soul Ring. We can fight off an Ancestral Recall with Mental Misstep. And Maharu typically plays Oath of Druids, but not on that today. Monastery Swift Spear. Sure, I'm not going to Mental Misstep that. We go to 19. All right. Do I still think that this is a Saga game? Probably. So we'll play the Saga... Like, I could just Vampire Tutor here into, like, turn two Tinker versus the red deck that I'm assuming is Burn. I'm not sure if that's a great move, though. They play Bloodstained Mire, Volcanic Island, into Eidolon. Eidolon resolves. Okay, so we do have Dress Down in our deck. That's a card we're interested in here to beat the Eidolon. We go to 18. We'll draw. It's another land. We'll play Polluted Delta. Pass the turn. A lava spike will fetch, and I'm going to hard cast mental misstep. I think no, it only saves me one damage. That's fine, and they're going to send in both. Interesting. We'll create a construct, and they're fetching in response. They price of progress, so I'll take four here. Okay, I go to ten, and now I can block the idol on, and this will put me to seven. They Fire Blast, so now I'll go to two. And I won't be able to Vampiric Tutor, but I think that's fine. Vintage Burn, I've seen it all. Dress down off the top rope. A little late, and we're at two. So it wouldn't have answered the idol on anyway, but now's our window. We're going to go for it. We'll grab Black Lotus. And I think we're supposed to Beseech the Mirror. We'll play our land. Sacrifice the Soul Ring. Beseech the Mirror with Bargain. We'll have two colorless floating. What to get, what to get. Storm is one. They're at 11. I think that it's just Tendrils of Agony. And then, yeah, Tendrils is just lethal. So we'll cast it for Storm 2, which seems a little sad. I understand. And now we'll play Yogmoss Will into Soul Ring Black Lotus. And then that's going to get the job done here. And Soul Ring. We don't need to play the Soul Ring in theory. You could just Black Lotus uh, Tendrils. And then they, like, they showed us that they're a blue deck, so they could have a Mental Misstep, but we have the life to Mental Misstep, Mental Misstep. So there was no punish but for playing out the Soul Ring there. We definitely want the Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Shield Red seems like a great card in this matchup. Probably taking out Belossus Citadel. We likely want the Long Goodbyes. Also good against the blue deck that's on Eidolon. So that's 64 cards. It's a lot. We'll probably board out the Time Walk. Shave one, Beseech the Mirror when we're bringing in Double Shield Dread. Maybe the Mox Pearl. And like one Lorien Revealed? I mean, this is tough. We have a lot of cards coming in. I'm going to try this. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's reasonable enough. And I don't love the skimming aspect of magic, but in Vintage, with so many one ups, I feel like you're more likely to do that. I feel like a lot of people that sideboard just, they're like, oh, I'll take off like one of each of these cards that I play four of. Obviously not in Vintage, but in 60 card formats that aren't, that don't have a restricted list, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. And it's, I found that that's not actually like the best thing to do. Like... You end up watering your deck down, and sometimes you can just board out a four of, and you'll your deck will be more coherent, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Skimming is not always, like, the perfect solution. Turn one mountain. The lava spike, you got it. Necro. That was probably a card I could have boarded out against the burn deck. I didn't even consider Necro. We'll play a Lotus Petal. 
Dark Ritual, and Shield Dread. A hey, resolved. Let's go. I was a little worried about Mind Break Trap there, but I still think you're supposed to just push. You could Beseech the Mirror on turn one. I don't know if I love that. Like, what are we doing? And Shield Dread just wins the match. Beautiful. All right, one and one, three matches left to go. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Time for the third match and we've won a die roll. Our opponent reveals a Lurus of the Dream Den. I think I'm going to try this. We have three lands in the face of Wasteland. We have the dress down for Lavinia already. We'll lead on the Mox Jet. Basic Island past the turn. Turn one Urza Saga. Okay. Mox Jet. Mana Crypt, fast start. Mishra's Bobble, three cards in hand. Time Vault, wow. Okay, so I'm going to Vampiric Tutor. And I think we're supposed to just try to win this game. We'll grab Tinker. They'll likely use their Bobble here. No, wow, no Bobble. Dark Ritual. And Tinka, sacrifice the Mox Jet. Spelled two. It resolves, we'll grab Velasa Citadel. Mental misstep. All right, so I believe we should fetch this away. That was definitely not a card we wanted to see on top of our dock. We'll grab Underground Sea. Uh-oh. Dress down. We'll have to draw a card here to clear the Ursa Saga. They flash in an Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. Dress down. Yogmoss will. That actually should win this. And now we can go Mox Jet, Dark Ritual, Vampiric Tutor. Beautiful. Dark Ritual, Vampiric Tutor. This is spell eight. We can put like um, Mystical on top and then Tendrils. Mystical Tutor, Mystical Tutor for Tendrils. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So we're facing what I'm guessing is Lurus Paradoxical Outcome. We likely want the Mind Break Traps. We likely want Force of Negation. I don't think Dress Down is that important here. Like, I just don't care about Orcish Bowmasters that much. And I'll board out the Time Walk. Like, I'm sure a lot of vintage people are watching this going like, Bryant is wrong for boarding out Time Walk. What I have found is that a lot of people don't re-examine how their decks are actually structured and how they work. And like, Time Walk with Urza Saga is not a play pattern that comes up a lot in this deck. Like, it might be right to just not play Time Walk, but people don't ever consider that sort of thing. Uh, when I was on a tear in Vintage at the start of the pandemic, I did not play Time Walk in my Paradoxical Outcome decks, and it was fantastic. Like, just Time Walk was not a good card in those strategies at the time. We cannot keep this. Ugh. I mean, it's a keep, but it's kind of bad. Mox Emerald. All right, you can see my hand. There's a Saga. Mox Pearl. Mox Jet. They have three cards remaining. Black Lotus, two cards. So they can put Lurus to hand, play Lurus. Replay Black Lotus. That's what they do. They put the Lurus to their hand. You can have Lurus. So this would be a juicy Force of Will target, I understand. But I don't think that Lurus at card advantage is what this game is about. So I'm going to let it slide. And now they'll Merchant Scroll. And they can go get like Ancestral Recall or Force of Will or something. And they grab Ancestral Recall. We are forced to cast Force of Will. They have one card in hand. We're taking a draw. And it's Dark Ritual. That was a good one. We'll play top. Pass the turn. So Beseech the Mirror next turn can grab like Necropotence. Yogmoth's Will doesn't have the resources to win yet. And we don't have another artifact for Tinker. If I drew an artifact, we could Tinker for Citadel. We would go Beseech, Tinker, Citadel, that is. Am I supposed to top in the upkeep, digging for that artifact? I think so. We'll spin the top. Demonic Tutor. Hold on. That one might create a win here. 
All right, so we take Demonic Tutor. We Blooded Strand for Underground Sea, Dark Ritual, go get Black Lotus with Demonic Tutor, play Black Lotus, sacrifice the, since he's Divining Top to Beseech the Mirror, we get Yawgmoth's Well, and that's a win. Yeah, okay. Let's go. They have one card in hand. Blooded Strand will fetch to 15. Dark Ritual. Demonic Tutor. Go find Black Lotus. We'll play Black Lotus. Sacrifice for three black. Beseech the Mirror with Bargain. Sacrificing this since he's Divining Top. We'll grab Yawgmoth's Will. Play Yawgmoth's Will. Storm is five. It resolves. We'll replay the Black Lotus. Dark Ritual. Since he's Divining Top. Hold on. Do we not have a Lethal Storm here? Uh, Storm 8 would be top, Storm 9 would be Beseech. They're going to go to 1? Oh no. Can I Demonic Tutor here? Demonic Tutor for Mana Crypt or Soul Ring doesn't do it. Um, <laughs> this is not good. Um, hold on. Demonic Tutor for Dark Ritual doesn't do it because we end up without an artifact in play. Um, trying to think. I think we're one spell short. The lifelink off the Lurus is going to get me here. So, top is Storm 8. Mana Crypt doesn't do it. Dark Ritual doesn't do it. Soul Ring doesn't do it. I don't think we're allowed to play Demonic Tutor here. I mean, you could try to spike off of the Soul Ring, or off of the top. You could spin top, flop, hit a zero, and that could do it. But if you miss, you're done. So I could Beseech the Mirror. No, I just have to top here, I think. All right, spin. I believe we just lost. All right, so there actually is a line here, I think. Um, I mean, it's really risky. So I Demonic Tutor for Dark Ritual, and then I flop top and hit a Mox. That is the only line that wins here. Mana Vault wouldn't have worked. It is a card I thought of, by the way, uh, but we're not playing Mana Vault. But it wouldn't have worked because we wouldn't have had triple black. So we have to hit one of our Mox in. We have five of them in the deck. Soul Ring wouldn't work either. Mana Crypt would. So we have six hits. All right, Dark Ritual. Draw a card. Oh my. Oh my. There is no justice. Wow. Play poorly. Get rewarded. We hit the out. Beautiful. Put it in the books. That's just good, clean magic and luck. <laughs> wow. All right, so we are now two and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, and we're facing Vintage Stalwart Montolio. We're on the draw, and I've opened up a really explosive hand. I don't know if it's good against the Lurus of the Dream Dun decks, but I'm going to keep it and try. Mox Jet, Tolarian Academy, Merchant Scroll, okay. And they reveal Ancestral Recall. They have four cards left in their hand. We draw a land. Let's lead off with Gitaxium Probe. I'll go to 18. We draw Bolas's Citadel. I can actually hard cast that here. And they have double force? Come on. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, we'll play Underground Sea. There's, come on, double force is not right. Uh, we'll play Soul Ring. Manifold Key. Untap the Soul Ring. Play Top. Spin Top. Okay, so I could have Flusterstorm back up next turn. It's pretty good. Okay, we'll keep these. Pass. Actually, hold on. Should I play out the Black Lotus? I feel like maybe I should. Play Black Lotus. And now we'll pass. They play the Ancestral Recall. They likely drew another blue card, so they still have Double Force Will available. Mox Opal. So they're on the Paradoxical Outcome deck. Strip Mine. That's actually pretty good here. Time Vault. Yeah. They have four cards in hand, so the last one needs to be blue to stop us here. Dark Ritual will untap the Soul Ring. Colossus Citadel. Force Pitch Force. Come on, let's see it. Force Pitch Force. I will Fluster. The Force of Will is countered. They still have two cards. One of them is a Lorien Revealed. Colossus Citadel. 
And it was another force. They drew three forces. Okay. Um, we know that our top cards are Dark Ritual Beseech the Mirror. I'm supposed to just pass here. We're likely going to get our Underground Sea destroyed. I understand. They could tap Tolarian Academy for three, put Luris to hand, tap the Strip Mine Mox Jet Opal, play the Luris. I don't know if that's something they want to do this turn. Portable Hole. That's obnoxious. Because now they can exile my Soul Ring and then Wasteland my C, and I'm stuck with two dead cards. They hit the key. Okay. I'm good with that. We might have just won. So they can destroy the Underground C. And I'm guessing that's going to happen. So we'll tap the Soul Ring. Cycle Lorien Revealed. No, they're really valuing this Strip Mine. We'll draw the Beseech the Mirror. Dark Ritual. Cycle the Lorien Revealed. We'll grab another Underground Sea. We'll play it. Beseech the Mirror Bargain Off Soul Ring. We'll go get Yagmoth's Will. And I know that I talked about it earlier on in the video, but having Beseech the Mirror here and not having something like Factor Fiction is a huge difference. We'll play the Yagmoth's Will. And now we can just replay our graveyard into happiness. Dark Ritual. Let's pop out the graveyard. Just make it a little bit easier. Cast another Dark Ritual. Black Lotus. Play the Soul Ring. Gitaxium Probe will go to 16. Draw a Mana Crypt. Tap the Mana Crypt. We'll Beseech the Mirror again. Sacrifice the Mana Crypt. And then we'll go grab Tundra's of Agony. Cast it. Wow. We beat the uh, Artifact Mana Start into Ancestral triple force of will technically double because they exiled a force of will to force of will but they did draw three of them and that's game number one okay so i believe we want force of negation and mind break because i'm pretty sure that they're the paradoxical outcome deck we don't need dress downs and the time walk it's cement you could board and shield dread because it stops paradoxical outcome i just feel like it's sort of fighting the matchup on the wrong axis. So Shield Red I originally put in the sideboard for the uh the like the Lurus control decks, but I think maybe there's a reality in which we go down to one, and that could be the basic swamp in the sideboard. I think that would be pretty reasonable. You'd have to change your fetch lands. So you'd be playing three polluted deltas and then a basic swamp in the sideboard, but it's a choice. We've opened up quite the hand. I am going to keep this. Let's go. They play basic Tundra past the turn. Six cards in hand. We drew the land. That's good. Mox Jet. We'll play Black Lotus. Dark Ritual. We'll fetch. Grab Underground Sea. And we'll cast Beseech the Mirror with Bargain, sacrificing the Mox Jet. It resolves. Okay. We could just get Necro and then avoid Flusterstorm. But I don't think that these decks even play Flusterstorm these days. So I think we're supposed to get the Yawgmoth's Will. I'm going to hold priority on this Yawgmoth's Will and we'll sacrifice for blue. And they just straight up concede. I love that. All right, three and one. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Another vintage end boss. We're facing Brian Kelly. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep this. I mean, this hand's just pretty good. Another Luris of the Dream Den matchup as well. Mox Jet. Urza Saga. You got it. Okay. We'll play Flooded Strand and pass here. But you don't need to play into an Orcish Bowmasters with this Ancestral. Urza Saga goes to the second chapter. Lotus Petal. Okay. They have four cards remaining. We'll fetch. Grab Underground Sea. What's Vampiric Tutor? Hmm. I wonder if Black Lotus is actually just the pick here. I think it is. All right, they have four cards in hand. I'm going to try to scare them with this Time Vault to get them to try to counter spell the Time Vault. They're fetching in response to Lotus. We will sacrifice the Lotus for blue. Play Time Vault. And that resolved. Ancestral Recall? 
And it resolves. Interesting. We'll play Mox Jet. Pass the turn. They create a construct and another construct. I'm not sure what's in their hand at this point where they allowed Time Vault Ancestral Recall to resolve. And do they have something like a main deck needle for the Time Vault? They play Flooded Strand. I get hit for five here. I'll go to 12. On the end step, we'll cast Mystical Tutor. It resolves, and I think we just grabbed Tinker here. Okay, we'll play Tolarian Academy. I think we want to tap the Urza Saga. And I will sacrifice the Mox Jet. They fetch in response. And they're going to spin top. Force of Will exiling Mindbreak Trap. Okay, um... I guess I will fluster from the Force of Will. Tinker. They're going to draw a card with top here. And they have their own Fluster Storm. So that's okay. I mean, I'm not cheering that my Tinker was countered. But next turn, like, I am assuming we're getting another turn here. We know that they're drawing since he's divining top. So the Constructs will become 4-4s. Four and then we have Urza Saga into uh, Manifold Key in order to win the game. Oh, I'm actually just dead to time lock. So they had everything. Okay. They got me. Yeah. Okay. Me drawing a bunch of lands off of the Ancestral was not ideal. 13 land deck, we only ever got to play three of them. So it happens. Like, high variance format, it's super powerful. And our opponent just sort of drew better than us there. I do think we want the long goodbyes and the shield dreads. We'll board out Beseech. One Beseech, that is. Take out the Mystical Tutor, Time Walk, and Lorian. Let's try this. You might be wondering why I'm not bringing in Mindberg Trap or Force of Negation versus the Blue Duck. They're counter spells, but they're really reactive counter spells against people trying to do super broken things. And the uh, Esper Luris deck isn't really that. We will keep this. They have seven cards in hand. Max Pearl. Top. That resolved. We'll fetch. Dark Ritual. Necropotence. Ayy. All right. Let's draw some cards. All right. So six cards coming to my hand. We will have to discard one. You could go super deep, but against the control deck, I don't really want to do that. I kind of just want to play the longer game, make good decisions, that sort of thing. We'll discard the Flooded Strand. There's a Saga. And they're passing. We'll play Mox Jet. Clarion Academy. Let's attempt an Ancestral Recall. Okay, things are going our way this game. Play Soul Ring. Dark Ritual. Whoops, that's a Demonic Tutor. Dark Ritual. Tap for a bunch of mana. We'll Tinker. Hold on. I should tap the Soul Ring. Tinker sacrificing Mox Pearl. We'll grab Velocity Citadel. Draw a card. We actually have both permanents in play that work with Citadel. You can also just pay your top card with Necropotence to remove it. So both top and Necro work in that way. And now we're off to game number three. We will resubmit. We're on the draw and I've opened up a super explosive hand. I'm going to keep this. It's a little risky, but I believe that the reward is there. Mox Ruby. Baracus. So that makes my Shield Dread plan a little bit worse. They have five cards, no blue mana. We did not draw into the mana source we needed here. Because I could have gone Dark Ritual into the wind with Forcible Backup. That did not happen. Play the key. They mental missed up. Am I supposed to fight here? Like, the odds are that they have a Force of Will. But if I draw a Dark Ritual, I think that's okay. Because then I Dark Ritual into Beseech the Mirror. Or, I'm sorry, if I draw a Black Mana Source. We will Force of Will. And they had Mind Root Trap. Okay. Pass the turn. The Time Vault in my hand is now useless. Cathar Commando. That's a spicy one. They're going to be able to blow up my Mana Crypt now. A little surprised that they fought that hard over the key then. If they had this in uh, hand. Mana Crypt. Tails. They have three cards. There's a Saga. We'll play the Time Vault. Because it's something I can bargain away. They attack for three. I'll go to 13. Clarion Academy. Three cards in hand. Time walk. Okay. 
They attack again. I will go to 10. Malevolent Hermit. All right, deck. I'm begging you. Give me a black mana here. We picked Tails and we won the flip. No. All right. We're in trouble. Black Lotus. They attack. We'll go to 8. They put Luris to hand. They can sacrifice the Black Lotus to replay Luris into Black Lotus again. So I believe that my window has shut this game. I needed to draw that black mana sooner. Draw for turn. And yeah, it's just too late now. I guess I can hope that they don't counterspell the Dark Ritual. And then we could long goodbye the Hermit. That's the only way we win this game. All right, we'll kill the Hermit. Dark Ritual. We need their last two cards in hand to not interact with us here. Beseech the Mirror with Bargain. We'll sacrifice Time Vault. That resolves. So we could do another Beseech the Mirror into Yawgmoth's Will. Beseech the Mirror again, sacrificing Mana Crypt. Play Yawgmoth's Will. It resolved. Okay. Play the Mana Crypt. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. And they concede we got there. Wow, Long Goodbye looked so good this league. We boarded it in three times versus Force of Will decks with Hate Bears in it. And I was really impressed by Long Goodbye. So... I, what I would do to the deck list, I think it's actually really simple. This is what we play today. This is what I would play tomorrow. I don't know if this is necessarily the right move, but it's something I want to test. I want to try the basic swamp in the sideboard. You have to play three copies of Polluted Delta. I'd probably still play the Time Walk, but I do think that maybe you could look at playing a more powerful card there in this strategy. I understand that, like... It's the power nine. It's a really powerful card. I get that. I just don't think that this is a good shell for the card. Um, like it's really only good with Citadel, Necro, and Construct tokens, but I don't know if that's necessarily what this deck wants. I also don't have a great suggestion either, so I could just be wrong. I am wrong, you know, a decent portion of the time, but hopefully you enjoyed the video anyway. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I hope you have a terrific day, and as always, keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. There's no better way to support our channel. If you're interested in elevating your combo game, visit theepicsfirm.com slash tutoring for details about our coaching sessions. Don't worry, there's more great combo content coming right up.